This is notes on 6.3b. So we've been doing volumes of revolution, also known as solids of revolution, and we have found the volume by adding up the volume of an infinite number of disks. Well, on this section, it's going to be very similar, pretty much the same thing, except with a little twist. So we're going to take a look at this example here. And we have two functions, a blue function on top and this green function on the bottom. They're both trig functions, cosine and sine waves. But we're going to rotate this. I already have rotated. And see the shape that's produced. So it's the region between these graphs that's producing the solid. So the region between the t-axis here and this green graph there's nothing there. It's going to be hollow. So the key characteristics of this section is going to be when you have a hollow center when you rotate. So as I rotate this, you're going to see we have this figure. But if you look, it's hollow in the middle. It's empty. So if you were to find the volume by the way we did it in the last section, you would find that it's going to be too big because we don't want to include this inside, which doesn't exist. So this is more like if you had a vase, how much clay would you need to make the vase, as opposed to what we did yesterday was, what was the volume inside of the vase? So how are we going to do that? Basically, if you know how to do what we just did um, on the last lesson, with a volume of revolution. It's the same thing, except we subtract the hollow inner part. So you would do the exact same thing we just did with this outer curve. You would find the volume by finding the area, or the volume produced by this outside curve. So just be pi r squared, integrated from the left to the right, and your r would be from this function to the axis of rotation. So you just have an R here. But now as we look at this transparently, you can see that there's this hourglass looking part in the middle that we shouldn't include. So how do we deal with that? Well, after we've taken the volume of the whole thing, assuming it was filled, we just subtract the volume of that hollow part. But how do we find the volume of the hollow part? <clears throat> Excuse me. That's just what we've done from the last section. We take this green shape, this green graph, and find the volume produced by the green graph and subtract it. So essentially, it's what we did last assignment, except you take one volume of revolution and you subtract the, in <clears throat> excuse me, the inside volume of revolution. So it's just doing it twice and subtracting. Now I'll say this, the book gives you a formula and it's one integral instead of taking two separates. I highly recommend you not use this unless you completely understand and I'll show you when we do some examples the common mistakes people will make and there's a higher probability of making this mistake if you write it as one integral as a book has it. So that's all I have to say about that. Let me do another example. Okay, here's just another solid revolution. And as I rotate this, this is going to create a different looking shape. And the thing will notice it has a hollow middle. So we have to eliminate that hollow middle piece. And I'll show you it's not doing the translucent, but I'll just skip that, I guess. So you just see that you have this hollow. So basically, you take the outside shape and you find your volume like on the last assignment. But then you look, oh, this graph here is producing the hollow. So you do a volume of revolution on the shorter radius inside. So not too bad. And this last one, it's a familiar one that we used last week. 
So you have two functions. And you see that as we rotate this, if you just ignore the inside G function and F, this is what we did last week. You take the volume using F. But now we can see that there's a hollow inside portion that we need to get rid of. We need to subtract that because if you look, there's nothing there. There's no volume. We need to subtract that. So all you need to do is ignore the f of x and just do a volume of revolution with g of x and subtract that from the original. So pretty easy if you understand the concept of how we do this. So let me go to the example here. So I'm going to draw the two shapes that we're going to get. Let me do that better. So we're going to have the larger radius right there. And then inside of that, we're going to have a, whoops, didn't want to do that. We're going to have one on the inside with the smaller radius. Now let me get a better shape than that. There we go. That's better, not perfect. They call this the washer method because if you know what a washer is, a metal washer, it's not always metal, but it looks like that. It's a hollow middle. It's basically a coin with a hole in the middle. That's why they call it the washer method because it looks like a washer. But you see that you have two different radii. So the first one, and I tell you this, the Radius always goes from the axis rotation, which in this case is the x-axis, to the graph. So in this case, that's going to be your big R. And then you just do the volume of revolution with the big R, just like we've always done. And then you notice there's a second radius on the inside. I'll call that little r. And we find the volume of the little r, and that will give you the volume of this hollow place in the middle. So we take the volume using big R, subtract the volume using little r, and that gives us our volume of revolution of this guy here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. <clears throat> I need to label A and B on the other pictures. So we see A and B. A would be the starting place right here, and B would be the ending place right here. So assuming you understood the last lesson, we're going to find the volume of the whole thing, including the hollow middle. So the volume will be this, pi r squared, but we're going to add up all the volumes of the disks, starting at a, ending at b, and we need our radius. So let me... Draw this x-axis in again, because you can't see it. There's our x-axis. So we need a big radius. Well, our bigger radius will be here. I'll call that big R. So I'm going to write it as big R, capital R squared, dx, because the width of one of these disks, if we were to color it in, that width is a change in x. That's dx, like we've been doing for the last couple of sections. But then I need to subtract the middle. So subtract, and we're going to take the volume of this little hollow part in the middle that you see there. It's produced by the inside function. So we're still going to add up all the disks from A to B, but this time it's going to be the disks of the inside there. So what's the radius for that? If you look, it's from the axis rotation to the function. I'm going to call that little r. So that's going to be pi little r squared dx. Well, what is big R, it's going to be big Y minus small y. Well, what is big Y? That's f of x 
right there, f of x is the big Y, small y is the x-axis, which is y equals 0. And then to figure out little r, now it's going to be big Y minus small y. Well, big Y is g of x, and small y is 0. I don't know why this isn't writing here. Because the x-axis is the equation y equals 0. So then, here's our final volume formula. Big R in this case was f of x. And little r in this case was g of x. And that's the volume in this particular case when we're rotating around the x-axis. Now, don't memorize this because we don't always rotate around the x-axis. And here is the way the book writes this. And I don't recommend this, even if you know what you're doing, because under the pressure of a test, you may do something kind of dumb. Exactly the same thing. They just separate or combine these two into one integral, which is totally legal. That's something you learn from the properties of integrals. If you have an integral of one function and another, you can combine them into one. Here is the danger, and I see this often, and this is wrong. I see people do this. And that is not the same. That is wrong. And that's the danger of combining into one. You can. I recommend not. But um, you should understand this. Because if it were a multiple choice question, this might be the answer that appears. And you have this. So I would say do understand this. But in the FRQ, I would avoid that to avoid this mistake. So I have four examples for you. They're going to be very similar. So I'll see if I actually work these out because they're all going to be very similar things. And I think I'm just going to set up the integrals and not do the actual calculus part of them. Let's do some examples. So region R is bounded by and we're going to use the same two graphs for the next four examples. So you have square root of x and x squared. So the region R is that region in between. I guess I can color this for you. So you're going to take this region, this, this lime-shaped region, and for the first one you're going to rotate it around the x-axis. So visually, What's happening is first you're going to have the outside region. So you're going to have the outside. That should be bigger, that last one. But then you're going to have a hollow center. So what you should see, this section here is going to produce hollowness in the middle. So I can do different color rings for that. Okay, let me do the big rings first. Let me do that. And we'll do it in two parts. So we're going to take the volume of the whole thing, looking at just this function here. And let me label these. That function is y equals squared x. And the other function is y equals x squared. So we're only going to look at the square root of x function from 0 to 1 and rotate that around the x-axis and find the volume of that. So it's just like we've been doing on the last assignment. We're going to have some disks. So let me draw them out. So here we're going to have a disk. Make it skinnier. Okay. And we're going to have them all the way across. The very last one will be here. <laughs> wow. That's saying I'm not very smooth. 
<laughs> okay, let me draw one here, and then I'll move it. There we go. Much better, much better. Hey, that was pretty good, if you ask me. And we have an axis of rotation. We're told the x-axis, so let me do that in red. So we're spinning it around that. And the x-axis is y equals 0. And so we have to add up all these disks. The first one starting way over here and moving all the way across. And the last one being at 1 here. So we want to add up all the disks from 0 to 1. And it's pi r squared. And I'm going to call it r1 for the big R. And the thickness of these will be dx. Okay, so what's big R1? It always goes from the axis of rotation to, let me stretch this out a bit, to the function. So I'm going to call, ooh, that's hard to see. Let me do a black one. Yeah, that's going to be right there. That's going to be my R1. And that's going to be big Y minus small y. Well, Y right here is radical X. So it's going to be radical X minus, and the Y on the X axis is 0. So it's going to be 0. So that's going to give me pi integral, add up all the disks from 0 to 1, of radical X squared dx. Now here's a problem. The center is hollow. So let me erase these and say we need to subtract the hollow centers. And the hollow center is produced by this. Because this is my shaded region, but my hollow region will be produced there. So basically, I'm going to find the volume produced by this and subtract it. So that's my goal. I'm going to subtract that volume. So I still have my axis of rotation. Let me draw some disks for the inside one now. So you're going to have some disks. Can I move that? That'll be good. And then they get larger as we move across. <laughs> I don't know why. It doesn't like me, it hates me. Okay, it's kind of crooked, but I'll take it. And then the last one, you know what, I'm gonna do it here because it, yeah. And let me shrink it down. Again, it's kind of crooked, but it will do. So that's gonna be the last one so the inside is producing a hollow center. So this is the part that's solid, but since this is hollow, we take our volume of the solid, and now we're going to subtract the volume of the hollow part in the middle, so it's still 0 to 1. But I'm going to call it R2 because it's going to be a different R. And what is R2? Well, it's going to go from the axis of rotation to the function. That's going to be R2. Well, that's going to be big Y minus small y. So that's going to give us R2 equals the big Y is this function, which is Y equals X squared. And the x-axis is 0, so that's my r2. So it's going to be pi, add up the disk from 0 to 1 of x squared squared dx. All right, and so that's how we're going to do this. So you take the volume of the bigger radius. That gives you the volume of the whole thing. Then this hollow center we have here, we need to subtract it. So we take the volume of the inside curve, 
rotated, and we subtract that to get a volume of just this part, okay? Now this is some pretty basic calculus. That's going to be x, and this is going to be x to the fourth. And now the antiderivative of x is pretty easy, x squared over 2. And then x to the fourth is x to the fifth over 5. Whoops, I already took the antiderivative, so I don't need that. 0 to 1. I plug in 1. Then I plug in 0. And then I plug in 1. And then I plug in 0. And I'm almost done. This is going to be pi over 2. And that's going to be 0 minus pi over 5. And if we get a common denominator, I guess we could do this. Multiply this by 5 over 5. Multiply this by 2 over 2. That will give us 5 pi over 10 minus 2 pi over 10, which is 3 pi over 10. All right? So that's the first example. Um, for the next one, you could pause and try it on your own. I'm taking the same graph. But now I'm going to rotate it around the y-axis, OK? Same graph, but we're going to rotate it around the y-axis. So our axis of rotation now will be here. That's the only difference. So now our disks are going to run horizontally, OK? So we're going to go through the same process. Let me draw some representative disks. There's one, and these are going to keep going until, ooh, that's not the shape I want. You know what? Let me draw it out here and then fix it. It works much better and shrink it down. And the last one didn't like that one. This will be the last one, and that's at the very tip top right there. So we're going to take the volume of the bigger shape, and that's going to be pi r squared, but we're going to go from our first one is here at 0, our last one is here at 1. How do I know it's 1? Well, this here is 1. And if you plug it in 1 squared, this point there you're going to recognize as 1, 1. So we know that point there. So we're going to integrate, add up the disks. Now, this is confusing because we're going from y equals 0 to y equals 1. I probably should have picked a different function because if you go from x is 0 to x is 1, you have the same numbers. But hopefully you understand why it's 0 to 1. It's not because this is 0 and that's 1. It's because this is 0 and that's 1. Now, what's the radius? A representative radius here, I will draw right there. From, as usual, the axis of rotation to your function. And so the radius of this would be big X minus small x. Well, the function here, this is y equals x squared, and the blue function here is y equals square root x. Well, I'm doing the black function to the y-axis, which is x equals 0. Well, I need to solve for x, because this is big x minus small x. Okay, I should write that down. It's your big x minus your small x. So that's what we're doing. But if you look, this is y. y equals that. Okay, we want what x equals. So we have to square root both sides. 
So if I square root both sides, this black line on the outside is y equals square root of y. So my r here is going to be square root of y. Small x is the y-axis, which is 0. So I'll call that r1. So it's going to be square root of y squared dy, because the thickness here is a change in y, because as you move up and down, y changes. Well, that's the first part. <clears throat> but hopefully you can see this is the region we're rotating. So this whole center part here is going to be hollow. So we need to subtract the center part. So let me erase all this. And let's subtract the hollow center. So these functions are the same. I shouldn't have erased that, but oh well. So now we're going to take this function and rotate it around and get some disks. So let me do that. Again, I learned my lesson. I make the disks out here. Nope. I make the disks out here, and I move them much better. Mucho better. Whoops. So let me move it. So that's going to be right there. And let me get a big one. Didn't like that. That was a good one. Why didn't it like that one? Okay. I don't know why it's not working right now, but one of these times it's going to work. <laughs> That's not even close to my shape. All right. This is being really picky right now. I don't know why. Wow. I'm having major issues. Oh, that was bad. I knew that. Why is it being such a pain? I don't know why. <laughs> that one, I know why. Wow. You can fast forward through all this. My griefs of writing, drawing an oval. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It usually is much better than this. It just doesn't like me right now. I don't know what's going on, honestly. I, I guess I'm going to have to, wow, finally, when I finally threaten. Okay, there's my last disc. I'm going to attempt to do another real small one here. Wow, now it works. So, this kind of is like that. Hopefully you can see it. All right, so I'm, I'm going to have to add up all these disks and take those away because this is the hollow part. So I need to subtract the volume of the hollow part. So I integrate from 0 to 1. And this is going to, I'm going to call this R2 dy. Now let me zoom in and show you what r2 is going to look like. It's going to be from the axis of rotation to the function. Okay? Call that r2. And this blue function we know is y equals square root of x. But this r2 that we're looking at is going to be big x minus small x. Okay? So what is big X? Small x is the axis of rotation. Big X is this function, but radical x is y. I need to solve for x to find big X. So I square both sides, and there I have big X. So r2 is going to be y squared, and this is going to be 0. That is my x equals 0 is that axis. So there's my r2, it's y squared. So I replace r2 with y squared squared because it's r squared. 
All right, so this becomes pi integral from 0 to 1, y, because the square and square root cancel, dy minus pi integral from 0 to 1, y to the fourth, dy. And at this point, um, yeah, we just do our antiderivative stuff. And this could be y squared over 2. This could be y to the fifth over 5. And you might think this looks very familiar, and we'll see why. Plug in 1. Plug in 0, you get 0. Plug in 1, we get 1 fifth. Plug in 0, we get 0. And so we end up with the same thing as last time, pi over 2 minus pi over 5. And we see that comes out to be 3 pi over 10. And you might say, wait, why is it the same answer? But if you think about this, whether you rotate this around this axis or around this axis, it's the same thing, but just different direction. So it's not surprising that they came out to be the same value. Now, it's not always going to happen like this. It just happens with this shape. And for example, 3, this is where it starts getting a little bit crazy because here's a big difference. We're going to rotate around the line x equals 2. No longer is it the x or y axis. We're taking the same function, two functions that we had earlier, but now we're going to rotate around the line x equals 2, which is over here. So therefore, if we do that, you have the blue function and the black function. We're going to look at the blue function first because that produces the bigger shape, the outer shape. Okay, I know these aren't very flat, my disks, but work with me here. So you're going to get a volume of revolution. I'll go ahead and draw this. Now that is just not really there, but that should help you see as you rotate this, it's gonna get that shape. So we're gonna find the volume of this whole mountain, that whole thing. And to do that, we add up all the disks, starting at zero, ending at one. So it's gonna be zero to one. And the volume of each disk is gonna be pi, I'll call it r1 squared dx. So we need the radius, and here's where it gets a little tricky. If you were to say, hey, here's the radius here to here, that's a problem because you don't know the equation of that function. Where is your function? Your function is actually over here. That function is y equals square root of x. So here's your function, here's your axis of rotation, here is your r. So let me draw in an r. I guess I could do in that color. Here's my radius. So that is going to be my R. But R, when we do R, let me thicken that up. Let me redraw that a little darker. So that's my radius. When you do R, this will be big X minus small x. Hopefully you can see that. And the question, what's big X? Big X is the axis of rotation in this case. And small x is going to be this blue line. So as we start, we're told this vertical line is x equals 2. So that's going to be 2 minus, and then small x. We can't put radical x because that's y, not x. We have to square both sides and get x is y squared. So in this case, we're going to have minus y squared for small. So in this case, your axis is first, and then your function is second. And so if you understand, you don't have to memorize that. It's just going to make sense. So for the volume for this one, let me put volume equals... That's going to be pi, 0 to 1, or r is going to be 2 minus y squared, squared dy. Now that is 
the volume of the whole thing. But what's going on in this problem? Let me erase some stuff and we'll talk. Here's the other issue. This has a hollow center because this is the shape, right? And as you rotate that around, it's going to be hollow in the middle because all this doesn't exist right there. It's hollow. So when you create this thing, it's going to have a hollow inside. All of this is going to be hollow. So you have to subtract the volume of the inside. I'm going to call that r2 squared dx. Now we need to look at the inside function. So how do we do that? It's created by the this function here, the black line. So my disks will now be on the inside line. And this one actually is going to stay where it is. So here's the difference. It's this line here that's being rotated to produce this hollow part here. Hopefully you can see that. So this region that I just created with these disks is a hollow part that I want to subtract. So I need to find my R2. So R2, it always goes from the axis to the function. Where's the actual function? It's right there. And what is that function? That function we're told is y equals x squared. Okay? Now, where is our radius? It always goes from the axis to the function. It's not going to be out here because we don't know that. Our function is right here. So if I draw that, it goes from here to here. There is our R2. In this case, again, it's big X minus small x. But what is the big X? The big X is this line here, which we're told is X equals 2. So again, that's going to be 2 minus. The small x is this black line. But if we put x squared, we are wrong because x squared is y. We want to solve for x. So if we square root both sides, we get x is square root y. So our small x here is square root y. So that there is our r2. I'm going to plug this in for r2 here, and that's going to give me 2 minus radical y squared dy. I don't know why I have dx's there. I don't know why. These should be dy's, because the thickness of these is a change in y. Now, Due to time constraints, I'm not going to integrate this. This is stuff that you did last chapter. You should be able to do. Just a little hint. You'd have to square this out and just integrate. Square that out and integrate. Okay? So that's it for that problem. I got one more to do for you. And it's this one. In this case, we're not going to rotate around the x-axis here, but the line y equals 1.5. Ooh. I just realized this should be 1.5, not 2. I should fix that. So this is y equals 1.5. And then you'll see that there's going to be, as we rotate this around here, it's kind of like a volcano again. It's going to be hollow because the shaded region that's being rotated is this. This is the solid part. All of this is hollow as we spin it and rotate it. And we're going to get a shape kind of like this, rotated. And you can see it's like a hollow volcano. And so let me do this. 
volume equals, now I'm going to do pi r squared, and this case is going to be a dx, and we'll show you why in a second here. And I'm going to add the disks starting from here to here. So we're going to go 0 to 1. And you're told 0 to 1 here. And we're going to subtract the hollow middle, which again is pi r squared from 0 to 1. I'm going to call r2 squared dx. And as I draw these, hopefully you can see why we have what we have. But let me draw the big outside of the volcano. Let me, ooh, that's kind of crooked, so I'm going to not use that one. Can I squeeze these? Oh, I saw it as a circle, so I can't. Okay, I got this. I got it. Ready? I've got this handled. No, that's horrible. That's why I'm a math teacher, not an art teacher. Uh, it's crooked, but I'll take it. I'll take it. So we'll use this for the right side end point. I wish I could strain it out, but it just doesn't want to go. Okay, close enough. I'm kind of sad, but we'll just use that. Then the left end, I got to get a good one here. I gotta, that's, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, it didn't do it. That's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> it actually wasn't beautiful, but it worked. I'll take it. So I got to go higher. There we go. That's the disc there. And let me do another one in the middle. And I might remake that right one. That right one's kind of lame -o. Ooh, that one's not too bad. It's a little crooked. A little bit. But I'm going to take it. You know what? If I make it skinnier and scoot it over, it might actually look okay. Eh, not too bad. And let me redo that last one because I'm not happy with it. Now it's shifted the other way. Oh, well. At, well, at least it's kind of better-ish. Okay, you get the idea. And on the outside, it's like a... Kind of like that. And so that's the big mountain, the whole thing. But we're going to see the inside's hollow in here because it's only this part that's producing the solid. So what is R1? R1 is the radius of the whole thing, the bigger part. And I claim it goes from the axis of rotation to our function. I don't like that line. From axis of rotation to our function. So I claim this is R1. So it's going to be big Y minus small i. Our big Y here is 1.5. Our small y is this function here, which is the function y equals x squared. So it's going to be 1.5 minus x squared is my r1. I like that. So it's going to be 1.5 minus x squared, squared dx minus. Now I need to subtract the hollow inside part. So to do that, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to take what I have already and just shrink it down. I didn't want to do that. I want to move this to the inside part. See that? In actuality, the end ones aren't going to change because they both intersect there. But what we have now is the inside part. Of 
correspond to that line there. So this is the hollow inside. Now there was a outside, we already did this part here. That darker one, that's this. That wasn't supposed to happen. That's this. That's using the out, outer edge. Now, as you see, all this is hollow. I'll go ahead and color this in. Maybe that might help some of you. Color this in. So this is the part we need to subtract because there's nothing there. So we need the radius there. And as usual, the radius goes from the axis rotation to our function. Try that again. Axis rotation to our function. That's going to be our inside radius, which we called R2, which is still big Y minus small y. The big Y is 1.5. Our small y is this blue function, but we know that blue function is y equals radical x. I'll go ahead and write that in. So our small y is going to be radical x. I'm going to punch that in for there, and we'll get our final answer. So it's pi integral from 0 to 1, 1 1.5 minus radical x squared dx. And there is our equation. Whoa, that's not cool. There's our equation. Well, not quite. Let's try it again. There is our equation for the volume of this Lime region being rotated around the line y equals 5. And that is, I don't know why it's example 5, it should be 4. That's kind of crazy, but that is the end of this lesson.